My name is Castles, and in addition to being an artist working in performance, film, sound, sculpture, and photography, I've also worked as a personal trainer for 18 years. So when I was young, I was really sick, and from ages 9 to 13, I had undiagnosed gallbladder disease, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but when disease goes untreated, it can go rogue. Now, this is usually a problem for uh, alcoholic 60-year-old men, not young people. And so doctors would send my mother and I home from the emergency room time and again, saying nothing was wrong with me, all in my head, despite the fact that I'd been profusely vomiting bile for hours on end. So it was only really when my bile ducts ruptured and the whites of my eyes turned green that the doctors took me seriously. And when they finally opened me up, I was literally rotting from the inside. Bleeding ulcers, bleeding out, full blood transfusion, tubes in every hole of my body, and then some. So my experience with illness taught me a powerful lesson that we can't just blindly follow systems that are already in place. We have to self-educate, self-motivate, and push beyond what's spoon-fed to us. Weight training was a key part of my recovery, and it became a pathway to self-determination. In both my art and my personal life, I queer my knowledge of nutrition, biomechanics, and physiology to render through my body an expression of gender. I think of the body as a sculptural object, bashing through binaries and the notion that in order to be officially transgender, you have to have surgery or take hormones. I perform trans not as something about crossing from one sex to the other, but rather as a continual becoming that occupies a space of indeterminacy, spasm, and slipperiness. In each of my performances, I train my body for different purposes. So whether it's being pressed against ice, gaining 23 pounds of muscle, pummeling clay, or being lit ablaze, my live durational works and the resulting performative objects melt, flash, and burn with visceral intensity. With Creative Capital support, I'm making a new series of sculptures called The Resilience of the 20%. These sculptures are made from a remnant of a live performance called Becoming an Image that I've been touring internationally since 2012. In Becoming an Image, I unleash an attack on a 2,000 pound clay block. Delivering a series of kicks and blows in total darkness, the spectacle is only illuminated by the flash of a photographer, which burns the image into the viewer's retina. I initially performed Becoming an Image at the One National Gay and Lesbian Archives at USC, which houses the largest collection of LGBTQ materials in the world. My performance points to the evidence of queer and trans lives that are often missing from historical representation. And the result of this performance is a series of bashed bodies marked with the imprint of fists, knees, elbows, sweat, and struggle. The title of my monument project. It's called The Resilience of the 20%. And it points to a sickening statistic that in 2012, murders of trans people went up by 20%. Now there's been a lot of media coverage of trans representation lately, but representation of some does not equate lived equality for all. For my Creative Capital project, I will cast the bashed remnants of becoming, of, from becoming an image in durable sculptural materials and make them into public artworks. Becoming public monuments, they will be placed in public spaces to mark sites where acts of violence against gender nonconforming people have taken place. And to choose these geographical locations, I'll work alongside grassroots organizations in each city. So I'd like to work with Gender Justice Los Angeles, in Los Angeles, uh, the Audre Lorde Foundation, or the Sylvia Rivera Law Project come to mind in New York. But this could be any series of, of uh, organizations across the country. In June, the body of 28-year-old transgender activist Zarita Reyes was found in the parking lot of a Dairy Queen in Anaheim, California. Reyes had been choked to death and kept in the trunk of a car before being dumped behind the restaurant. Imagine a monument in a Dairy Queen parking lot marking this quotidian space as a scene of violence and loss. These sculptures will create an active way of bringing visibility to those who did not have it in their lives. I'm an expert in transforming the body, a process that depends on making small progressive changes, troubleshooting, listening to feedback, and being present. The challenges of social change are similar. In order to strive for progress, we must put in the sweaty and uncomfortable labor of change and not accept the given standards. But in order to do so, I need some help. 
Uh, I'm looking to partner with LGBTQ organizations with progressive politics to place the mon monuments in community contexts, and I'm open to suggestions here. I'm also looking to partner with art institutions in several cities to help promote the work and offer custodial services. These institutions could also be home to an exhibition which showcases sound pieces, large-scale photographs, and original clay bash, and maps to all the sites where the monuments are or will be placed. This project is tangible and timely and will have an impact on a broad public as well as the trans community. I will fabricate the sculptures in 2016, 2017. I've made a concrete cast of one of the clay bashes already and with continued support, I want to pour casts in porcelain and bronze. These traditional sculptural materials will offer historical weight, preciousness and fragility to the monuments. I'll then be ready to place the works in 2017 and 2018, but I'll need assistance placing the sculptures in community sites, securing permits, and navigating the foreseeable bureaucracy that this project will inevitably <laughs> entail. On a personal note, I'm presently struggling with managing the combined demands of my day job and my art career. I've just returned from my first museum solo show in Europe, and at the end of August, I fly to Finland to perform a new work for winning the first ever anti-international live art prize. But in October, I have a performance in Slovenia that requires a completely different training protocol, and then in November, it's back to London to light myself on fire, literally, at the National Theatre for a new work. All the while, I'm up at 5 a.m., managing a personal training business and training for the intense protocols that my works require. So if there's anyone out there who can offer any advice on how to bring life back into balance, come talk to me after a protein shake. Thank you. <laughs>